As a small business owner, you've got enough on your plate. Managing cash flow, finding the right financing, and cutting through all the misinformation can feel like a never-ending process. Maybe you've been there, struggling just to keep the lights on, or missing growth opportunities because you don't have the capital when you need it the most. And finally, when you think you've found a solution, you're hit with another hurdle, confusing terms, higher interest rates, or even worse, empty promises that don't deliver. How many of you all have been told from a broker or another lender, take this loan out now, you can refinance it in a month or two later, only to find out that's not true. I get it, the struggle is real. But what if I told you there's a clear path to getting the funding your business needs, and you could se secure it in as little as four weeks? That's right, no more guesswork, no more chasing false promises. Today, I'm going to show you how to apply with the SBA 7A loan the right way. We'll break down the entire process step by step, cut through the confusion, and get you the capital your business deserves quickly and easily. Before we dive into the specifics of the SBA 7A loan, it's important to understand why the SBA even exists and the critical role it plays in the small business community. The U.S. Small Business Administration, or SBA, was founded in 1953 with one mission, to help American entrepreneurs start, grow, and thrive. Over the years, it's become the backbone of small business financing, offering support through local programs, grants, and even disaster relief. In fact, since its inception, the SBA has uh, helped millions of businesses secure the funds they need to sur survive and scale. The SBA has made it their mission to level the playing field for small businesses, offering tools, resources, and access to capital that might otherwise be out of reach for many owners. Their 7A loan program, which is what we're focusing on today, is by far the most popular. It's designed to help small businesses access fle flexible financing for nearly any purpose from buying equipment to expanding operations or even purchasing real estate. The SBA's goal is simple, to fuel small business growth and provide the support needed to turn entrepreneurial dreams into reality. Without the SBA, many businesses wouldn't be able to secure the financing they need to compete with larger corporations. In fact, last year alone, the SBA helped approve over $25 billion in loans, showing just how significant their impact is in the small business. So how exactly does an SBA loan work? And what makes it di different from a traditional loan? The key is how the SBA partners with banks and lending institutions to provide security for both you and the lender. Here's how it works. When you apply for an SBA loan, you're not borrowing money directly from the SBA. Instead, the SBA acts as a guarantor, working with approved banks, credit unions, and other lenders to provide the capital that your business needs. The SBA guarantees a portion of the loan, up to 85%. This guarantee reduces the risk for the lender, making it easier for small businesses like yours to qualify for loans that might otherwise be out of reach. This is a big deal because it means lenders are more willing to approve loans even if you don't have the strongest financial profile or collateral. The SBA is essentially telling the banks, hey, if this business can't repay the loan, we've got your back. The security gives the confidence to lend to more small businesses. Another important point is that the SBA doesn't set the interest rates your lender does or the bank does, but thanks to the SBA guarantee, rates are typically more competitive than what you'd find uh, with other types of loans. At the end of the day, this partnership between the SBA and lenders is all about making capital more accessible to small businesses while minimizing the risk for both you and the lender. It's a way for everyone involved. Now that you have a good grasp on how SBA loans work, let's dive into the specifics, the terms of an SBA 7A loan. Understanding these terms is crucial to making an informed decision and ensuring the loan fits uh, your business needs. First, let's talk about loan amounts. SBA 7A loans can range from as little as $25,000 up to $5 million. This flexibility allows you to tailor the loan size to your specific needs whether you are purchasing new equipment or expanding your business operations. Next up, interest rates. The SBA sets maximum rates for 7A loans, but the actual rate you'll receive depends on your lender and your credit worthiness. Generally, SBA 7A loans come with competitive rates compared to conventional loans, which can save you money over the life of the loan. For example, the interest rates on SBA 7A loans are tied to the prime rate plus a margin set by the lender or the bank. 
So right now, the prime rate is 8.5%. Today is September 17th of 2014. So at 8.5%, typically the bank or the lender will tack on another 25 to 3%. What I'm seeing most mostly right now is 11% interest on these SBA 7A loans with the repayment going over 10 years. Let's not forget about down payments and collateral. While SBA loans are more accessible, they do sometimes require uh, collateral, which could include business assets or personal guarantees, as well as a down payment. In some instances, you, need, you may need to put up as much as 10% for an SBA loan. The SBA's guarantee helps offset this, but be prepared that you might have to put up some form of security. With that being said, I know that most loans under $500,000 with the partnerships I have at certain banks across the country, if you are asking to borrow $500,000 or less, don't need to put up any form of collateral and no down payment. One of the benefits of the SBA 7A loan is its flexibility. You can use it for a wide range of purposes, working capital, equipment purchases, and more. This makes it a versatile option for many small businesses. Understanding these terms will help you evaluate if an SBA 7A loan is the right fit for your business and ensure you're comfortable with the financial commitment. Remember, the goal is to get a loan that supports your growth and aligns with your business's needs and financial situation. Before you get excited about applying for an SBA 7A loan, it's crucial to understand the eligibility requirements. Meeting these criteria ensures that you qualify for the loan and helps you avoid any surprises along the way. First, to be eligible for an SBA 7A loan, your business must meet these basic criteria. Operating business, your business must be actively operating and engaged in business activities. For profit, you need to operate for profit. Nonprofit organizations are not eligible. Located in the U.S., your business must be located in the United States. Pretty simple. Small business, SBA size standards. Your business must qualify as small under SBA size requirements. These standards vary by industry, so check the SBA size standards for your specific sector, and I'll leave a, a link below for that. And ability to obtain credit elsewhere, you must demonstrate that you cannot secure the uh, desired credit on reasonable terms from non-federal, non-state, or local government sources. Credit worthiness, your bus business needs to be credit worthy and show a reasonable ability to repay the loan. However, not all businesses are eligible for an SBA 7A loan. Here's a list of excluded industries you need to be aware of. Nonprofits, financial businesses, banks, finance companies, and, and uh, factors primarily engaged in lending are not eligible. Passive businesses, businesses owned by developers or landlords that don't actively use or occupy the assets acquired with the loan proceeds. Life insurance companies, foreign businesses, Pyramid sales plans, so any type of pyramid sales distribution plans are excluded. Gambling activities, illegal activities, uh, any businesses engaged in illegal activities under federal, state, or local law is disqualified. Private clubs, so any businesses with mem membership limits for reasons other than capacity are excluded. Government-owned entities, except for businesses owned or controlled by a Native American tribe, government-owned entities are ineligible. Loan packagers, businesses that make more than one-third of their revenue from packaging SBA loans. Incarcerated associates, uh, businesses with associates currently incarcerated or under indictment for serious crimes are excluded. Equity interest, businesses where the lender or CDC or any of its associates owns any owns an equity interest. Defaulted federal loans, businesses that have previously defaulted on a federal loan or caused the federal government to sustain a, a loss are ineligible unless weighed by the SBA for good cause. Political or lobby, lobbying activities and then speculative businesses Businesses engaged in speculative activities such as wildcatting are excluded. Understanding these eligibility requirements and exclusions helps you determine if SBA 7A loan is a viable option for your business.
If you meet these criteria, you're one step closer to securing the funding you need to grow and succeed. Now that you've got a handle on eligibility, let's talk about how you can use the funds from an SBA 7A loan. The flexibility of this loan program is one of its greatest strengths, allowing you to allocate the proceeds in several valuable ways to support and grow your business. Here's a breakdown of the approved uses for the SBA 7A loan proceeds. Acquiring refinancing or improving real estate. You can use the funds to acquire new real estate or buildings, refinance existing real estate loans, or make improvements to your current property. This can be a great way to expand your business location or enhance your facilities. Short and long-term working capital. Short and long-term working capital. SBA 7A loans can provide both short-term and long-term working capital solution. Whether you need to cover day-to-day -day operating expenses or invest in longer-term projects, this loan can help bridge the gap. Refinancing current business debt. If you have existing business debt that's high interest or burdensome, you can use an SBA 7A loan proceed to refinance a debt. This can help lower your payments and improve your cash flow. Purchasing and installation of machinery and equipment. The loan can be used to purchase and install new machinery and equipment or to upgrade your current assets. This is crucial for staying competitive and boosting productivity. Purchasing furniture, fixtures, and supplies. You can also use the funds of eat to buy necessary fi furniture, fixtures, and supplies for your business. This includes anything from office furniture to shelving units. Changes of ownership. If you're looking to buy Buy out a partner or sell a portion of your business. SBA 7A loans can cover changes in ownership, whether complete or partial. And if you have several needs, you can use the loan for multiple purposes, combining any of the above uses into a single loan. This flexibility allows you to tailor the loan to fit your unique business situation. The key takeaway here is that the SBA 7A loan offers a broad range of uses to support your business needs. Whether you're expanding, upgrading, or managing your operations, this loan can be a, ta a powerful tool to help you achieve your goals. When applying for an SBA 7A loan, one of the most critical steps is gathering the necessary documentation for underwriting. Having these documents prepared and organized can streamline the process and improve your chances of approval. Let's break down the required documents into two categories, business and personal. Last two to three years, business tax returns. This helps lenders assess your financial history and profitability. Year-to-day balance sheet. A current year-to-day balance sheet is necessary to show your business's financial position at the present moment year-to-date profit and loss statement. You will also need to uh, provide a year-to-date profit and loss statement to detail your business's income and expenses so far this year. Income statement. An income statement provides a detailed summary of your business's revenues, costs, and profits. Six months bank statements. Um, six months of recent bank statements are required to verify your business's cash flow and account balances. Debt schedule. The debt schedule is outlining all existing business debts, which helps lenders understand your current financial obligation. SBA Form 1919. You will need to complete the SBA Form 1919, which provides essential borrower information. You can download it here. I'll leave a link below. Business Plan with Cash Flow Projections. A comprehensive business plan with cash flow projections demonstrates your business strategy and how you plan to manage and repay the loan. Franchise agreement. If you're a franchise or applying to, for uh, a franchise to, to finance the, um, the beginning of the franchise, you need to include a copy of the franchise agreement. Business license, a copy of your business license verifies that your business is legally registered and operating. Lease mortgage agreement, lease or mortgage agreement. Uh, provide a copy of the lease or mortgage agreement for any property your business occupies. Now for personal documents. Last two to three years of personal tax returns. Personal financial statement details your individual financial status, including assets and liabilities. There may be a general application that you need to fill out depending on which bank or lender that you are applying through for the SBA 7A loan. And then a resume, some banks or lenders will ask for your business experience just through a form of a resume. So it's important to note that not every bank and lender 
asked for all of these documents. They all have their own unique set of needed documents to do the underwriting process. But I just like to list out all of these just in case, just so you all are very well prepared before you apply. Gathering these documents might seem like a lot of work, but having everything in order will help make the underwriting process smoother and faster. Being thorough and organized shows these lenders that you're serious about your business and prepare to manage the loan effectively. With all your documents gathered and ready, you're well on your way to applying for an SBA loan. But before you submit your application, it's essential to understand how much you can borrow and what your payments might look like. This brings us to an important step in the process, loan calculations. Knowing how to calculate your loan terms can help you plan better and make informed decisions about your financial options. Let's walk through how to use the loan calculator to estimate your loan amount, interest payments, and overall costs. Let's walk through how to use a loan calculator to estimate your loan amount, interest payments, and overall costs. This tool can be incredibly useful for visualizing different loan scenarios and understanding what fits best with your budget. We'll input your loan amount, interest rate, and repayment term to see how the numbers play out. This will give you a clearer picture of your monthly payments and total interest over the life of the loan. So let's go ahead and dive into those calculations and see how this can help you get a handle on your SBA 7A loan. All right, so now we're taking a look at the SBA loan calculator that I've been using for years, and you're welcome to check out this website. But if you just type in at Google SBA 7A loan calculator, I believe this is the first one that pops up and it's Janover. And I'm not really sh exactly sure what Janover does, but I know for a fact that these numbers are very accurate. So it's just meant to give you a good idea of what your estimated monthly payment would be. Okay. So we're looking at, I just put in a million dollars and the interest rate at 11%. So if you remember, we are, went over in this video right now, today is September 17th, 2024. Uh, the prime interest rate that the federal government has set at is eight and a half. The banks will tip, typically kick in two and a half percent on SBA 7A loans, if not 2.75%. So you're seeing a lot of loans right now that are paying uh, 11 to 11.25%. Now, the interesting thing with the SBA 7A loan is that the interest rate is variable. So it'll go up and down with whatever the Fed sets the prime rate at. The good news is right now, these numbers are, the interest rates historically high in the last 10 to 20 years. Now it's gotten a lot higher, only back in the, I believe it was in the 90s when inflation was skyrocketing. So hopefully inflation, hopefully checks down and it goes away in the next year or so. But for right now, I haven't heard anything about the interest rates keep rising. So we'll see about that. But just know that these payments can actually go up and down, these monthly payments that you're looking at, okay? So again, we're just putting a million dollars at 11%. Typically, it's over 10 years. Sometimes banks and lenders will do seven years. It just depends on what type of financing or what, what the purpose of the financing is for. Like a lot of times with equipment, it's seven years. It just depends, like I said. But typically, they'll do the max term, and that's 10 years. That's what customers will want. And that's 120 mo monthly payments. So the principal balance is a million dollars. Typically, you're probably gonna have to put a down payment up to 10%. So if you did 10% down payment on the SBA 70 loan at a million dollars, it'd be $100,000 down. So then your principal balance would then become 900,000. Now, like I said in the video earlier too, I don't know if you caught this, but a lot of the SBA 7A loans that I do that are $500,000 and less do not require a down payment. That's just what a lot of the banks that I work with, that's how they do it. And then anything above 500,000, they typically do require a down payment. So just keep that in mind as well. But today, if you were to take out a million dollar loan, the total interest, if it stayed at 11% through the 10 years, which it's not going to do, but the total interest pay would be 653,000. Total financing costs 1.65 million. Okay. Monthly SBA loan amount would be $13,775. That's what any customer that's any business owner that's taking out a million dollars, or I'm sorry, yeah, a million dollars and, and they still are paying on an SBA 7A loan today. That's what their payment would be around. Okay. So total annual payments would be 165,000. And then if you go down here, you can actually, on the website, you can look at the amortization schedule. So you can see it goes all the way down to 120. 
Okay. And then this first column here is the what payment it is. And then second column is the principal amount. What here's your payment is going to be 13775 but month one is going to be way less interest. I'm sorry, way less principal that's getting paid down versus the interest. So once you get closer to the end of the term, obviously at the end, it's mainly principal versus interest at the end there. So this is just another thing to think about. You can obviously, you can pay these off. Some SBA ones you can pay off early and have no penalty. Other ones, typically it's just the 504, that's commercial real estate financing. So you're probably not going to do that with the 7A loan. They use the 504 program for that. So typically there's no early payoff issues with the 7A. But again, this is just a tool for you guys to use. You get, you just type in SBA 7A loan calculator into Google. GNOver should be the first one to look at. And you can mess around here with the loan amount numbers interest rates too, if you want to look at it, loan terms. So let's just do it just for fun. I believe it was around five and a half percent two years ago. Um, let's just make it look six and a half just to be safe. But as you can see, you're saving a couple thousand dollars a month in the SBA loan payment. If it was six and a half percent versus 11 today, you'd, you'd save almost half of uh, the total interest pay over the life of the loan. So hopefully those numbers go back down, but again, hopefully just Hopefully you all can use this as a, as a tool, as a resource, if you're interested in the SBA loan. All right, now that you've got a handle on calculating your potential loan terms, it's time to put those numbers into context. Understanding the broader landscape of SBA 7A loans can provide valuable insights into how they're being used across different regions and demographics. In this next session, we'll explore key statistics related to SBA 7A loans, including how they vary by state, county, gender, race, and industry, among others. This data can help you see where your business fits into the larger picture and provide a benchmark for your own financing goals. We'll look at the dis distribution of loans across different states and counties, analyze how loan approvals di differ by gender and race, and examine which industries are receiving the most funding. This information not only highlights trends, but can also guide you in aligning your business goals with SBA 7A loan opportunities. So let's dive into these statistics and see what they reveal about SBA 7A loans that across various demographics and regions. It's a great way to understand the broader impact of these loans and how they can support businesses like yours. All right, we're looking at the SBA 7A and 504 lender report. Uh, they update this every single day. So if you all want to take a look at it, just type in into Google SBA 7A 504 Lender Report and it should pop up for you. But we are looking at all the loans done in the fiscal year of 2024 with the SBA. So with the SBA and all of its partner lending lenders and banks across the country, all of those numbers get calculated onto this uh, website here. So they've done 66,000 so far this year. Approval amount is almost $29 billion, and the average loan size is $436,000. The fiscal year runs from October 1st to the end of September. So as I'm making this video, it's September 17th. There's a few more days that we'll, the numbers will get updated for the rest of this fiscal year of 2024 over the next couple of weeks. Okay, So these numbers will change depending on what day you look at it. But it is cool to see you can go back and look at past years. So if you look at 2023, we did about less than, 10, they did 10,000 more deals, about 10,000 more deals this year versus last year. Approval amount, they $1.3 billion more in 2024, but the average loan size was a little bit higher, which is interesting. And then if you look at the top three banks here, Live Oak Bank, Huntington National Bank, New UK, and then there's ReadyCap and Byline and Celtic Bank. Those are all online banks, so you never have to step into a branch. You never have to meet with somebody in person. So the convenience factor is there for, obviously, for small business owners. You all don't have a lot of time, so it's very convenient for you all just to get on the phone, talk to somebody over the phone versus spending an hour or more to go back and forth to a bank. And you can upload all of your documents into their portal or via email. So they make it very easy for the small business owner to qualify for these SBA loans as far as a convenience factor. And I think that's a trend that's obviously, it's been going on for a long time. 
I feel like with retail and Amazon, it's the same thing with lending. It's just, it's taken a little bit longer with the technology to get there. And also a trust factor from the small business owner perspective. Now, I would imagine that most of you all have dealt with an online lender at this point. So I think that this trend, it just makes too much sense. It's going to keep going that way as far, even with SBA lending. Okay. But keep those three in mind. And then you go to 2024 and it's the same top three, top four there. A U.S. Bank and uh, JP Morgan actually jumped in there at number five and number six. But New Tech was number one this past year. They almost did $2 billion. Live Oak Bank was just behind them. And then you can actually see two here. So New Tech, their average loan size is 553,000. Live Oak Bank is 1.3 million. Huntington, their average loan size was less than 200,000. But they did a considerable number of deals more than New Tech and Live Oak. If you all are interested in this data, just type in SBA 7A and 504 lender report. And you all can check this out for yourself. You can look at your state and bordering states. You can look at the 7A and the 504 programs to compare those two. And like I said, you can go to, to different years and look into the past. There's different SBA 7A loans. I'm not going to break all of these down on this video, but I will do it in the future. The main thing here is you can work. What I would do is I would check and see if my bank is on here. So if my if you have a local bank, check and see if they're on here. If it's a big national bank, odds are that they have done a considerable amount of SBA 7A loans. And then these these lenders here, I work with New Tech, Live Oak, and Huntington. Never worked with ReadyCap, but I might start working with them just because they do a number of these SBA 7A deals. If you want to work with me, I can do these deals for you as well. But what I would do is I would call my banker if they're on here, if they're listed as one of the banks that have done these SBA loans and just say, hey, I've watched some of these videos on SBA 7A lending, very interested in the program, want to learn more about it and see if it might be a good fit for me. And then if you want to take a stab at some of these other online banks as well, the thing about the online banks is typically they take a lot less time to get these deals done. For instance, with me, anything with $500,000 or less, if that's what you want to borrow, I can get done in as little as four weeks. I know with a lot of SBA 7A lending, it, it can take three months, if not longer. It just depends on how many deals they do every single year. Keep that in mind. The convenience factor of these online banks are growing and growing because that's what the small business owner wants. In the next video we're gonna go over, I'll have to stop this, but next video we'll go over is more of the demographics. Okay. Now looking at this page, this is going over the SBA 7A and 504 summary report. The last one was the SBA 7A and 504 lender report. The summary report is going over different segments as far as demographics, race, gender, veteran, loan size, business age, rural versus urban, export, industry, state, lender type, business type, number of employees. You can put yourself into one of these boxes and you can see exactly how you stack, stack up against other business owners and see who's getting these SBA 7A loans and who's not. Again, I wouldn't look into this too much, but it's an interesting thing to look at. It breaks it down here so you can see which group, how many have gotten SBA 7A loans, the percentage of the count of all the loans, and then the approval amounts, and then the percentage of the amount. Gender, you can look at uh, male-owned versus female-owned, 50% or less, or female-owned more than 50% and female owned more than 50%, there's way more than the female owned 50% or less. So that's interesting. But female owned altogether, not looking at the percentage, is makes up more than 25% of all loans, uh, SBA 7A loans of this year. So that's cool. You can look at how many veterans. There are special veteran programs depending on what bank you're working with. Loan size, this is an interesting number. So. 50,000 and less, they did 19,240 SBA deals so far this year. And then you look at greater than 2 million, only 3,100 deals so far. So that makes sense. That makes sense. And then uh, greater than 500,000 to 2 million, 9,855. I know this is a really long video. If you have watched it all, maybe you saw where I pointed out, if you are asking for a $500,000 SBA 7A loan or less, 500,000 or less, then in most cases, I can help you all out where you're not gonna have to put down any collateral or down payment. 
Now, if it's $500,000 or more, you might have to put as much as 10% down, which is very costly, and put up collateral as well. Business age. So existing or more than two years old makes up the majority there. New business or two years or less is 11,181. Um, that's a common misconception with the SBA program is that you have to be two years or older as a business to be able to qualify. Whereas, you know, they do a lot of franchise SBA loans. I know Huntington does, in fact. Even, even if you just have a business plan and it's not a franchise and you have good projections and you show that you're going to be able to pay off the loan and the bank likes the deal, then they'll do the SBA 7A loan for you. So that's that one's different than startup loans or loan funds will open the business and that's 10,325. Two year old businesses or less than that at 21,000 deals this year. Change of ownership, so you can partially buy in or you can 100% buy the business. That made up 5,600 deals. Rural versus urban, the majority 55,000 versus 10,000 was urban so far this year. Let's look at industry. So you look at, uh, this just does it in alphabetical order, but you can go on here and look at the different industries. Let's look and see what the top industry was based on percentage of the count. So the number of deals looks like 14%. So that's construction. So a lot of construction deals. Second was retail trade. Third was professional, scientific, and technical services. I'm sorry, no, accommodation and food services was second at 12%. And then retail trade was third. You bring it down by state too. That's an interesting one. Let's look at the top. I believe California is the top. They did 11.8%. Yeah. Texas did 7.4. Yeah, so pretty well spread out. Florida, 8.4%. Let's look at New York. New York's always top too. 6.9%. So that makes sense. We're, the majority of the population is there's going to be more businesses opening up or more businesses that need SBA financing. So that makes sense. Lender type. So you can see it breaks down by bank, community advantage lender, credit union, savings and loan institutions. So it breaks it all down here. Obviously, most of these are going to be done by banks. And then small business lending companies, 5,000. A good amount done by credit unions as well. And then it breaks it down even by corporations here. LLCs did the majority of 40,000. And then corporations, 17,000 there, number two. Number of employees, I like this one. Five or less made up the majority. I think that's great as far as small businesses, because those are the companies with five or less employees are the ones that need the financing the most. And they did close to 42,000. And then it stays with that trend. Six to 10 was next. 11 to 25 was that after. So again, if you are interested in looking at this page, you can type in SBA 7A and 504 summary report into Google, and this will pop up for you. You can download the data as well. Now that we've walked through the entire process from understanding SBA loans, gathering the right documents, calculating loan terms, and exploring key statistics, you might be wondering, what's the best way to move forward? And here's where having the right guidance can make all the difference. While many small business owners consider going directly to a bank or working with a traditional broker, there are significant advantages to partnering with an expert who specializes in SBA loans like myself. A lot of banks or brokers take a one-size-fits approach, but I work with you to create a customized financing strategy tailored specifically to your business. Every business has unique needs, and I make sure the loan you apply for truly aligns with your growth goals. Navigating the SBA loan process can be complex and time-consuming. I've helped over 2,000 businesses secure funding, so I know the requirements, the timelines, and the red flags that can slow you down. My job is to make the process as smooth and efficient as possible for you. Having established strong relationships with a wide network of lenders and banks, I can connect to you with the right institution for your needs. It's not just about getting a loan, it's about getting the best loan for your business.
Unlike going to a single bank, I offer access to multiple lending institutions, which means you're not locked into just one option. This increases your chances of finding the most favorable terms, whether it's lower interest rates, better repayment schedules, or higher loan amounts. There's a lot of misinformation out there, like claims that you can easily refinance into a line of credit or an SBA loan after just a few months of making payments with a merchant cash advance or another online lender. With me, you get transparency and honesty. I set realistic expectations up front, so there's no surprises down the road. Your goal is to secure funding that will help your business grow. Not get stuck in a loan that doesn't fit. I'm here to make sure you get the right financing with the best possible terms, and I will be with you every step of the way. If you're ready to take the next step, or if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. I'd be happy to guide you through the SBA loan process and help you secure the funding you need to grow your business.